Hello, Mike. Hello, Jackie. Great to see you. Great to see you. Brave, you're outside. Let's hope the signal's good. It, obviously, you know it is to be there. Yeah, it's pretty good. It's pretty good. And uh, let me show all your followers where I am. It's um, oh. Oh, wow. the beautiful Edgebaston Reservoir, which is um, it's not far from where I live. And it's also very close to the venue we were at, uh, Charlie's, Charlie's um, Great Awakening Tour, a week last Sunday. But, and that's how I met Mike. Just about half a mile away. Unbelievable, because we didn't know that was there. Yeah, so we would have gone up to see that, I'm pretty sure. So I missed that, Jackie. Say that one again. Sorry, yeah. We didn't know that was there, because we would have gone up to see that before coming home. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Although it was a jam-packed day, wasn't it? it, it jam-packed. Was amazing day. Jam-packed, but it was beautiful. Yeah, absolutely lovely, the whole thing. Um, so I'll just say that I met Mike at um, Charlie Ward's Great Awakening Tour. Um, that was in Birmingham, not last Sunday, but the Sunday before. And uh, Mike was the fourth speaker on, um, which he's just informed me. And... Uh, <laughs> Yeah, it was just so interesting. And then Sharon was with me and then Sharon went up and asked Mike if he'd do a, a talk for us. Um, because you're talking about the children. Obviously, there's loads more we could talk about, but that's what you're talking about. But I'd love to know a bit about you and how you come to be a speaker at Charlie's event, how you know Charlie, anything like that, Mike. OK, well, my background is in the corporate world. Um, uh, the pharmaceutical industry, actually. <laughs> <laughs> guess which company I work. Guess which company I work for latterly. I got a feeling Very you said Pfizer, one. was it? Afraid so. Guilty as charged. Guilty as charged. Um, until I saw the light, you know, I saw the actually not just the not just big pharma, um, but the corporate world for the evil that effect that it's having on the world and you know i now believe that the pharmaceutical well i don't believe i know um is the is the most corrupt of the um the scene industry shall we say or the scene co corporations on the planet um because it's it, it, as, as we all know um medicine is not about health it's about keeping people on the medicines you know for life it's not about cures it's about maintenance and maybe poison so I got I got out in 2007, and uh, I went off to do my own thing. Uh, I, I gained international recognition for leadership within Pfizer. I'm not saying that to brag, but uh, it was easy. Um, most people in Pfizer and in the corporate world manage upwards, yeah? Right. The plea for losses. I could never do that. My team was the most important to me, so I managed downwards. Um, so we used to get great results all the time, you know, because... My team knew I cared about them. You know, there's a saying that people don't know, uh, don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. Oh, I love um, that. So I went up. Yeah. Um, and I saw the, the difference that leadership makes in the corporate world, both good, but more often than not bad. So, uh, you know, I went off on my mission to change the corporate world with my, you know, my, uh, my take on leadership. And... Uh, what a thankless task that was, you know. I'd do some great, I'd have, you know, great few days with, you know, with teams. And yeah, we're going to change this, we're going to change that. And, you know, great stuff that we've learned. And then you go back for a follow-up six months later, nothing had changed, nothing, you know. So it was, uh, it was very disheartening. Um, but I've always, I've always been, you know, a fan of, um, a, a student of leadership and a student of coaching. Um, and how... To, well, to wind forward until two years ago, um, I thought I was fairly wide awake. Um, I know now that, you know, I've probably got one one eye a quarter open. Um, but I called BS on, you know, Convid from, from day one and, uh, you know, made my feelings clear to all my... I've, I've got quite a big Facebook following and... Uh, uh, Know, a, a really good group with about 8,000 members at the time. Um, and I came across this guy, this, uh, this bald guy, who um, seemed to know what he was talking about and seemed to have some pretty good connections. 
Um, and he told me that Jesus loved me even if everybody else thought I was a twat. <laughs> and that was Charlie. And that was Charlie. <laughs> Yeah, I, it was it was a circuitous route that I found him. You know, one of those synchronicities. But I was one of his. He talked about his original thirty-seven followers. I was one of his original thirty-seven followers, oh. and um, just by we just became. Uh, there was a group of us used to have a Zoom call. Charlie, not Charlie to start with, but, but you know, a group of my friends, um, awake friends. We used to have a Zoom call every Tuesday. And one of the guys, um, he was doing podcasts and he interviewed Charlie. And uh, so Charlie used to pop on pop onto our Zoom calls, you know, qu quite regularly. And it all started from then. We've we, we become like best buddies, although we'd never met until a week last Sunday. Wow. And um, I was really chuffed when he asked me to be, you know, to be part of this this tour. Brilliant. And, uh, it was, you know, it was a real privilege. And what a day it was. There were some, you know, amazing speakers there. But the audience, the vibe, it was off the scale, wasn't it? It Jackie? really was. Yeah, yeah. There was 500 there, weren't there, or more? 650, I believe. Oh, 650 really? in the day and then uh, 250 for the dinner. Yeah. Yeah, no, marvellous. And so your talk when you came on, um, you know, that really resonated with me because you know I was a learning support assistant um, but within all the people I speak to as well the children are so important um, and after listening to your talk the very next day I had the people's lawyer out at Romsey doing a talk and his book is school is no place for children unbelievable what? because that's so in line with what you were talking about yeah, it, uh, it, what, what a great title for a book, eh? Yeah. And uh, I, I don't believe school is a place for children because they're taught um, what to think, not how to think. Yes. And, uh, and they're indoctrinated and they're taught to conform and to fit in and to not be an individual. Now, I don't know about you, but I've never wanted to be the same as everybody else, you know? No, no we want to be us, don't we? We want to be who we are. Yeah, yeah. And... Um, so my, my, my vision is to, um, I'll, I'll tell you a little story in a minute as well, to illustrate that. But my, my vision is to uh, um, build a string, a chain, sorry, of uh, purpose-built children's homes designed with children in mind and where they'll be brought up in a, an environment and an atmosphere of love. Oh. And I love to say um, to a child, love is spelt T-I-M-E. Um, so brought up in an atmosphere of love and in the full awareness and knowledge of who they really are because as we know we've all been dumbed down to yeah. our true identity to our true, we are so much bigger than we've been conditioned to believe that we are before i forget can i go back to what you've just said about t-i-m-e can you explain that yeah so, well to a child love means you give them time Right, sorry, I see. I thought you meant like that the parents only got a certain amount of time for them, or, or you know. No, it's uh, no, you know, children need time spending with, and they need time on their own, and they need time to play with each other, and they need. There's one behind me now. <laughs> and Good. they need having fun. <laughs> <laughs> and then. They need time to use their imagination. I shouldn't call them kids. Goats have kids. We know the connotations there. Children have such amazing imaginations. And um, up until the age of seven, children have no conscious filter. So everything that they see, hear and experience goes straight into their subconscious and becomes like an operating program or a set of beliefs. And... Um, Depending on the, the first seven years, uh, the Jesuits used to say, give me the child until he's seven or she's seven and I'll give you the man. Yeah. And yeah, that's absolutely. what they mean. Because, we, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. You, you're already with that. Definitely. Yeah. So most of us, most of us, most of us have had a, a, you know, a mixture of good, good um, experiences, bad experiences. Um, but we've all been conditioned by our parents who were conditioned by their parents to, you know, to be in the matrix. 
Yes. And um, I want to I want to break free from that. You know, because I've, I've been a coach for many years, and um, when I coach people, I always coach from a beliefs perspective, um, because it's beliefs that you know the, the underlying program that leads to to our behaviours. Yeah. And um, also, you know, whenever coaching an adult, it's normally the child within the child within that you have to coach, because that's where the limiting that you know the, the the belief that we have that limits our performance in life, our success in life, our happiness in life. That's where they're normally rooted. Completely. And, you know, that's what needs. But you know, if if children are brought up in the you know the knowledge of who they are and in an, an environment of love, and I'm not talking just about my my vision and my project now, you know, all children. Yes. Can you imagine what a world it would be? Absolutely. You know, we could, the, the world would change within two generations. Oh, without a doubt. That's all children crave, isn't it? To be loved. Yeah. But yeah. to understand how, how important it is to love themselves as well. Spot on, spot on. It's the, the it, well, the most important relationship that we have is with ourselves, isn't it? Absolutely. I mean, we're still struggling with that now, like as adults, because we've never really been brought up that way. You know, that would look as arrogant or, you know, selfish or, but it's not, it's not in any line of that. It's absolutely to love the person that you are, because you know you're doing the best you can with what you know. Spot on, Jackie. Love it. Spot on. And, and the other thing, we can only give away what we've got. So if we've got no love inside us for ourselves, we, you know, we're limited in the, the amount of love that we can give others. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, the and vision it, you've got for that is just amazing. I mean, it's everything, you know, like you say, within two generations, what a world we will have. Yeah, we, and uh, I'm glad you said will, not would. Yes. Because we yeah. will. We will. Because that's what Charlie's humanitarian project, so it's not saying it's just Charlie's, but he's really leading the humanitarian project. And that's what it's all about, isn't it? If you've got a heart-filled humanitarian project, you know, that's what we are working towards. That's what we're creating. That's, that's exactly right, yeah. And um, that's, that's how the world is going to be, as I see it, moving forward. You know, we're going at the moment from darkness to light, from evil to to god um and it's just it's just gonna i'm so excited about the future you know yeah. so excited yeah i don't know if you know thinking... diana cooper the angel lady say again sorry jackie have you heard of diana cooper the angel lady no i haven't oh okay. like... so i've seen and heard of diana well i see her most weeks now because she lives near me but um, but for years and years, she's been on my radar and um, she has always said that 2032 is the new golden era. Yes, I've heard that. Yes. And, and so I absolutely believe, you know, that that's what we're working towards. And, you know, um, on the 21st of December 2012, when everyone thought all the computers were going to crash and everything and you know, was going to yeah. Yeah, so we're smack bang, well, this December, we're smack bang in the middle of that 20-year period of change. Okay. But wow. this last two years has been like, bang, <laughs> really waking us up. It's been, um, it's been unusual, hasn't it, the last two years? <laughs> <laughs> How mild could you say that? <laughs> I just think it's the most amazing time to be alive. You know, I know there's been tragedies and stuff, um, but this is this is this has been the final war. It had to be the final war. If they'd have won, ninety-five percent of us probably wouldn't be here. You know, in a few years. Absolutely. Um, yeah. But I absolutely believe, and I got a download, a spiritual download to this effect in October 2020 to say, "Stop worrying, we've won." So we're going to get rid of them now. And, we're, you know, Jasara talks about a thousand years of peace and how beautiful a prospect is that, you know. Yeah, no more I don't war. know why only a thousand years. But anyway, I mean, we can hope that or, or you know, visualise that it's going to be forever, you know, a world of yeah. peace. 
yeah, I, I, yeah, I don't see why it can't be forever because, you know, the evil, and this is why it's had to be such a shock to every, or it will be such a shock to everybody because this, I can't find words to describe the inhumanity of these things that have been running the world, but we can never allow it to happen again. Had you two two years ago? Had you got any clue as to the you know the depths of depravity of the no you know the... no I I had um I had an idea um I'd heard things but no way no way but at the start of it we were hearing silly silly things you know King of England and things like that you know um, yeah yeah and who who had been dealt with and who was a man and who was a woman and you know. <laughs> There was a lot of things like that, and that's still going on. That's sort of bubbling underneath, but it's not. It's more about the um, how this world has been run for many, many years, and and that there is, for instance, there is no um, conservative or labour, but that's the divide and conquer. They're all owned by the same people. Yes, yes, absolutely. And I do. And, and if it resonates as truth with you which it did with me, I, you know, that's my truth then. Yeah, well, I, I, I can't remember the last time I voted, to be mm. honest. I was probably been 30, maybe 40 years ago. Really? Um, yeah, yeah, well, I could never reconcile the fact that I was going to vote for somebody I didn't know and probably wouldn't respect because they're politicians and, you know, what the politicians actually do, they play politics, they don't get anything done. Well, exactly. Like they're not even on our wavelength because they're all for their world that they live in is just no correspondence to what our world is. No, and that, and that, like in the corporate world, they manage upwards. They please their bosses. They please the puppet masters because that's all they are is puppets and bad actors. Absolutely. And we've yeah. had enough of them, haven't we? Their time. They, they, they've had their time now. Now it's our time. Yes. Yeah, because they say there's going to be a new world order, a new world government, don't they? Not government, there's going to be a new... I've said that wrong. Yeah, definitely okay. not. No, their, 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 their vision was a, you know, a globalist world, a globalist world, world government, a, you know, single currency, one religion, um, social credit scores, totally enslaved. I mean, we've all been enslaved since we've been born without without realising it. Yes. But I have. I tell you what, this has been the most incredible time for me. You know, it's it's been the best of times and the worst of times. But for me personally, it's been the best of times because I have never learned so much in my life. No. Oh my God. It's. I've been on a crash. I, 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 I'm. I'm a glutton. You know, for knowledge now. And I've been on a crash course of, you know, world affairs, geopolitics, history. Can't wait to learn the real history. Oh, exactly. Do you believe we're on a flat earth, Mike? Uh, I didn't two years ago. I, I absolutely do now. Do See, you? there, that's me as well. And I didn't believe that till six months ago, if that. Well, say six months ago. And I started to question it then. Um, and now I would say that I am a flat earther, yeah. Not even yeah. that it's flat. I don't know that it's completely flat, but but it's certainly not a circle. We, it's certainly not a globe spinning at uh, over a thousand miles an hour. Exactly. When the birds yeah. can just fly gently either way. Yeah, and I remember seeing a post on it must have been Telegram about a year ago saying if, if the Earth was really it was a, a, a picture of a helicopter hovering. If the Earth was really spinning. The helicopter wouldn't need to go anywhere, just need to stay up in the air for a bit while the, you know, <laughs> its destination up. caught up with it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And when you look at what routes a plane has to take to make us believe yeah. that we're on a spinning globe. And 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 you look at the, um, is it the World Economic Forum? Yeah, the, it's on the World Economic Forum or the WHO, their logo. It's flat earth. It's flat earth, man. Yeah. You know, hidden yes. in plain sight. Yes. And, a, and another thing that somebody explained to me as well is like, so if this, um, so say that is the earth. Yeah. 
And then the rocket goes up from here, going up to the moon or whatever planet it's going to. Then how in Australia do they see it? Because where is it yeah. going if it's going straight up? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> you know, so that just made. And then I saw another picture the other day. So there's Australia under here. And it had cruise ships being hung on by gravity. I mean, because they're upside down. If you look at it, then you can imagine that there's a load of cruise ships in Australia now upside down. <laughs> hung on by gravity. Water doesn't bend. But, but that no, just doesn't. shows how much we've been indoctrinated. Yeah, and, and personally, I'd, I'd never really questioned, that, you know, I'd never asked the questions about the globe or the, you know, flat Earth. It, it was only when I started to, to question that it made perfect sense to me. Made Absolutely. Perfect. Absolutely. Honestly, it's just... Um, you know, I, I mean, I don't know the answers. I don't know that, but I, I really don't believe for me for personally, and it doesn't matter if anyone else believes we're still on a globe, a spinning globe, that's fine. But the bloke I spoke to a couple of weeks ago, David Wise, he's in America. Um, he's offering three Bitcoin to anybody that can say to them, prove in any way that we're on a spinning globe, spinning, wow. globe, spinning, yeah. Spinning globe, yeah, spinning ball, whatever. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But three Bitcoin isn't worth nearly as much now as it was three weeks ago. <laughs> I know, yeah. I know, apparently so. I mean, I don't know anything about crypto, do you? Not a lot. Just, just I, I, I keep, I, I, I've been keeping my eye on the financial markets purely because I want them to crash. You know, we need them to crash, don't we? So the uh, the GCR can come in. The and they Zara are... and the Sara. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, Do you believe that's near the global now? currency reset? Yes. Do you believe that's Say again, close? Sorry, Jack. Do you believe that's close? That we're close now? Did you know? Um let me let me pray see this. Uh, not pray see it. Um uh, I'm the eternal optimist, yeah? Yeah. Um, and I can be pessimist, you know. I believe, it, I believe we are really close from everything I'm hearing, but I, be, I believe we're close for about 18 months now. Um, but but there, I think there's too much noise going on at the moment for it not to be close. I, th I think we're days, if not weeks, away. Do you really? I do, yeah. Well, everybody's saying it's going to happen this month, May, and, you know, the... What are we now? The nineteenth. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. And apparently, there's been several reports from um, you know normal banks that they know it's going to happen as well. In, oh, they're saying in June, but that's for the general public, um, not for us in Tier Four B. You know, with the with the RV. Right. So, and it's it, well, it's got to happen because that's going to fund my project. Well, exactly. I mean, we've got a huge project that um, Sharon, that come and spoke to you, she channeled an amazing project and we sent it oh. off to Charlie and, and uh, you know, sent, sent it all through. I mean, it would just be incredible. Um, yeah, we, well, you, it's you, exciting. Yeah. You're going to share where it is? Well, it's just, um, you know, there'll be a, a school for all children, um, the most up-to-date school, like you say, full of love, that can learn through play, that can learn by caring for animals. Uh, there'll be a whole animal section, um, a whole, you know, grow your own, massive, massive grow your own to, to feed everyone. You We've know. got the same vision. We've got the same vision. <laughs> oh, honestly, it, it's just the beautifulest and and beautiful accommodation for like when sasha stone comes over to talk and different people like that <laughs> yeah 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 it's going to be amazing isn't it absolutely amazing absolutely yeah and, and, and you know being as i'm when i'm i'm i talked about my project at uh, the great awakening tour i'm so glad i did because i had um i think it was 15 people really enthusiastic people um came up to me and said they wanted to be a part of it <gasps> Oh, how lovely. 
So I've got a team ready. I've, I've, I've created a WhatsApp group and the energy, think of the energy on the day, on the 8th of May, the yeah. energy in our, our WhatsApp group is pretty similar. It's, it's off the scale. Oh, amazing. So can you talk about yours then, Mike, just to tell people a bit about what your vision is? Yeah, it's it's well, it's similar to yours, you know, to completely transform the way children without parents are brought up. Yes. Um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna start with one. Um, so I'm looking for a piece of land, probably about two acres. And uh, one of the one of the guys who came up said he wanted to help as an architect. No. Synchronicity there. Absolutely. So we're gonna design. We're going to design a, a, a home with uh, from a child's perspective, whatever that means. Yeah. Yes. Just to to, to me, I mean, I love I, I could talk about children all day. I love children, but to, to interact properly with children, you have to go into their world, don't you? Yes. You don't expect them to come into yours, and their world is so much more fun than ours as well. <laughs> you know, when you were told not to daydream, daydream is what we need to do. We're told we're trying to learn how to meditate now. That's what we could have done so simply as a child. Yeah, the the the, the, the power of imagination. It's uh, imagination is one of our superpowers because what yes. we can what we can vividly imagine has got to be delivered to us. Yes. Because that's our connection to the divine, our yes. imagination. Yes. Yep. Yeah. So and and like you say, there's going to be you know, uh, vegetable. There's going to be a vegetable, two acres of vegetables, pets. There's going to be a, a, a peace garden. Um, you know, there's going to be all that sort of stuff to educate children in what's really important in life. Yeah. Not the crap that they learn in school these days, which, you know, who uses anything that they learn in school <laughs> on well, a day? Yeah. Exactly. What really, truly. Um, and then, do you know, the synchronicity of, so you talked about children, that, that really resonated with me. Then I had the people's lawyer who'd written the book, um, School is No Place for a Child, um, and said it's, you know, tyrannical. A lot of the teachers don't even know what they're doing, um, but don't realise how the indoctrinating they are to the to the children. No, they, they, I'm sure they don't. I'm sure they don't because they too have been indoctrinated and, and manipulated. Absolutely, yeah. Uh, but then I listened to this chap, Nick Williams, who has written 19 different books. Um, and he recommended, you, I don't know if you've heard of the film with Elizabeth Gilbert, Eat, Pray, Love. No, I haven't. Eat, Pray, Love. It's a true story that she wrote and she got known worldwide for it. But she's now done another book another well she's done loads I imagine but she's done this um other book I don't know it's magic something so if you put Elizabeth Gilbert magic it would come up and all for, and I have it on the cd playing because I don't read a lot of books to be honest so as I'm driving along I'm listening to her and that's all about don't go into debt at university if you want to learn you could buy all the best books in what you're passionate about and you won't be going into debt in college and um, in university, um, because what's the outcome of that? Especially if you're a creative person. Yeah. And we get ourselves in so much debt that we lose our creativity because you're then so worried about how you're going to pay the debt back. Yeah, 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 yeah. We're debt slaves. We've been debt slaves all our lives. Absolutely, and that's but why I love. Sorry. But no, not anymore. We're exactly. coming out of it. And that's why I loved um, Simon... Um, Parks. Parks. His talk, when he said about what we visualise it, when we think of a slave, we know what we think of a slave, you know, to look like. But he's brought us right up to date to what today's slave looks like, um, I, which is... It was terrific, his presentation, wasn't it? Terrific, terrific. To say, you know, about those young children that were in the cotton factories with no shoes on their feet, and they would work yep. all week for a coin, and at the end of the week, they were given this coin, and they could only spend it back in the place where they got it from. Yep. Oh, you know, but we've had all those lifetimes, Mike. We've been through all those lifetimes. We've chose to be here right now for the change. I, I, I'm, 
I, I'm absolutely convinced that we, we all chose to be here right now. I, I've never felt so much on purpose as uh, as I am right now. No. I, I got. Um, I, I I believe that God, the divine, the creator, infinite intelligence, call it what you will, it's, it's all the same thing to me. It is source, yeah. Yeah, source speaks to us all the time, or communicates with us all the time. Not particularly speaks to us, but communicates with us all the time. But most of us don't listen. Yes. And um, I've got to listen. And um, I got this huge download a few weeks ago now, clear as a bell, that told me my purpose right now is to be a source of positive energy for other people. And if I could have chosen any part to play, that would probably have been it. So it probably means I did choose it. Yeah. You did. Yeah, well, I th I th yeah, yeah. We're all so much more than we've been conditioned to believe we are. Absolutely. And yet two years ago, where were we two years ago to even consider talking like that? Yeah, I know. It's, it's, it's just been incredible. The, the other incredible thing for me over the last two years um, has been the people I've met. Yes. I've met some of the most incredible people, you know, yourself, you know, Charlie, you know, all, you know everybody. It was, it, it, it was like one mind, one heart, one soul, one consciousness on that day. Absolutely. And, uh, 90, 95% of my best friends now. I didn't know two years ago. That's a fact. That is a fact. Yeah. I mean, we go up the hill because I do do a stand in the park near you. Yep. Yeah. Every Sunday. Oh, brilliant. So do I. Yeah. So yeah. at our stand in the park, we've got Pan Gregory, which is a well, well known astrologer. Yep. We've got Diana Cooper, who's the angel lady. Okay. AJ Roberts, who does an amazing podcast. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, um, he comes up most weeks. Nick LeClaire, who's really in tune with Source and humanitarian projects, and he's come on board with ours. He's such a visionary, you know, um, so amazing. Um, there's another name I was going to say. Doesn't Jackie White be there as well? <laughs> I go up there, yeah. <laughs> but, but um, yeah, you won't believe who I was. Oh, and Harry Thomas, he came back from Brazil last September um, and got put in prison because he would, because he hadn't had anything here. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and so he was put in prison for, I don't know if it was 24 or 48 hours, um, because... Um, he had to self-isolate for 10 days and pay for the hotel for 10 days or whatever it was then. That was that was last September. And he knew all the common law words. He knew everything that he had to say to them. And he got himself out, but they were very, very, not very nice at all because he knew where he stood with them and said that they could get 14 years in prison themselves for what they were doing to him. And he was recording it. And then he did a viral, a, um, a video that went viral, completely viral around the world because of, you know, he said he was really nervous, but he, he knew his rights and he absolutely yeah. knew what to say. And he got out of there. So he comes up the hill. Um, and then I went to um, a farm at the weekend and unbeknownst to me, I'm sat next to Anna de Bruchet. Really? Someone said Anna, and then I heard her answer, and I turned around, and I thought, I know that voice. And it was Anna de Bruchet. I was sat next to Anna de Bruchet. What a hero she is, eh? What a hero. Oh, my God. You know, what? Who, like you say, who we've met in the last two years. But And the thing is, we're all ordinary people as well, aren't we? You know? Exactly. Exactly. It's amazing. But ordinary people doing extraordinary things. Well, this group that at the top of the hill, I'm not kidding you, they've got a humanitarian project of their own, really. It's, you know, it, they've got all, Dr. Sam White. Yep. He comes up the hill with us. He was at the farm on Saturday. Um, I, was, I was speaking to his mate yesterday. Who's that? Mark Sexton. <gasps> I was at a party with Mark Sexton and Sam and all that about six weeks ago. They get you, get you. I know, but you just never would credit it, would you? 
What a great guy, Marcus. Um, he, uh, you uh, told I mean, me I'm, when I'm I spoke. Sorry. Go on. You told me when I spoke to you earlier in the week that you um you were meeting up with Seth Mark or speaking with him. Yeah, 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 yeah. We, we've known each other a while now, and I, I just think he's been doing some brilliant stuff. Really and he's, brilliant. He's, he's, he's never at home, you know, he's up and down the country. He's up and down the country. Marvellous. He's absolutely marvellous, yeah. Honestly, yeah. what people are doing, but every one of those that go up the hill, you know, they've got their own, um, if anyone's ill, they've got a rotor that you can actually phone them. You don't have to worry about the doctors now. You can ring them and they'll help you through it. And a uh, Heidi, who's a homeopathy person. And that, that's another thing, you know, medicine, I mean, well, the NHS is dead in the water, basically, isn't it? Yeah. You know, it's 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 untenable now. And, you know, hospitals have become killing fields. Yes. Uh, I, I don't know how doctors are sleeping at night. I really don't know. Because they can't be unaware of what's going on. No. Um, but medicine is going to change completely. Thank God. Thank God. And, you know, all the knowledge of the, the you know, the, the older natural cures is coming out. There's, there's, a, there's an answer for everything in nature, I believe. There is. Yeah, there is. Because all our ancestors knew it as well, didn't they? Yeah, they did. They did. They and did. it's not lost. It is coming back. You know, uh, Heidi did a wonderful course for us recently. So we understood a bit of homeopathy. Um, brilliant absolutely brilliant so a few people like that and all the energy workers um you know spiritual healers psychic surgeons all of that's coming to the fore now aren't they it's uh, it's amazing and then we've got med beds yes yeah. <laughs> yeah i mean are they actually about now mike would you say well, well i saw a photo um of a med bed being delivered apparently in Germany yesterday. Really? Yeah. So as long as what we're hearing is true, Jackie, this time next year, I'll be 35. <laughs> <laughs> Don't limit yourself. Say 25. <laughs> I'll be happy with 35, you know. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, my gosh. Wouldn't that be incredible, though? You know, for anybody that... Uh, you know, a friend of ours had a really bad accident at the at the weekend, you know, really bad. We Because I was talking to a lady last night that was explaining 3D, uh, or Tuesday night, 3D, 4D and 5D. But then someone else said, you know, you can't talk in dimensions. We are here and we're... But anyway, but she said, like, we want to be in 5D, which is on the highest vibration, Um but then you hear well, someone that's had a really bad accident and you go back to 3D because you think, why has that happened and everything? Oh, you know what I mean? I know exactly what you mean. I know exactly what you mean. But with um, the med bed, that would be sorted straight away, wouldn't it? Yep, yep. But also, I believe we can self-feel as well. You know, we just don't know that we can. Oh, absolutely, yeah. Yeah, because when you learn Reiki, you have to do self-healing for 21 days, don't you? Yeah, I, yeah, I don't yeah. know if you've done Reiki, but... I, I, I've got many friends who are Reiki, heal, Reiki practitioners and, you know, Reiki and healers. That absolutely. Yeah. I mean, really, it would be ideal if I carried on. You know, I did the 21 days, but, yeah. But you just know that you're a healer then. And, and you know, even talking about that, the heat that's come into my hands. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we're all healers. We just don't. Well, we're, you know, we're all energy. So we're Trust, you, exactly. We're all healers, but we, we just don't know it. No, absolutely. So yeah, we probably well, we haven't really gone off track because that you know it is just understanding how much how important it is for the children to they are our future. Um, so Tim Wild. He's a marvellous friend and he did a wonderful workshop on Sunday. Um, and he's got a son that was born in 2009, I think. Um, and you get these crystal children, rainbow children, indigo children, all of that. You know, I don't really understand that, but they can be quite challenging. 
um, because they know what they're here for and they're not going to be swayed by us and they're not going to be conformed by us. And he said he thought he was awake until he had this child and that child has really woken him up. <laughs> Children are our teachers. I've got yeah. no doubt about that. Yeah. I, I have learned so much from my two children, you know, when, mainly when they were toddlers. Yes. Yeah. They're, 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 they're just amazing. They're just amazing. Let, 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 let me tell you my favourite story about my daughter. Um, oh, lovely, yeah. She was... Um, I, I was 46 when Indy, India, Indy we all call her, was born. And um, when she was two and a half, my mother died, yeah? Yeah. They'd been really close, but we decided that Indy was too young to go to the funeral. However, there was a memorial service um, for everybody who'd had the, the following month, for everybody who'd ha had a, a funeral in the church the previous month. So a bunch of us went along, including Indy, and the, the church was packed. And about halfway through the service, the vicar came to the front and said, would one member from each family um, come to the front, we'll light a candle for your loved one. So um, I grabbed Indy, we went and stood in a semicircle at the front. And we were the first ones called, so I went up and got a candle for her and gave it to her, and she lit it for a nanny and put it on this uh, this plinth, and we went and stood back in line. And about five or six other people did the same, so there were six or seven candles burning on this plinth. At which day she turned, I can still hear her saying it now, she whispered in my ear, she went, Daddy, Daddy, can we sing Happy Birthday now? <laughs> oh, I love it. That's joyful. I could have eaten her. I could have eaten her. And my mother, I'm sure, well, she did love it. She would, you know. She... Absolutely joyful, isn't it? Like the, the joy they bring you. Oh, it's amazing. It's amazing. And it, it, it was my mother that I got my lover kids from because she absolutely adored kids. And um, I stop, I've got to stop calling them kids. That's a weaponized word. Goats have kids. <laughs> my, my mother loved children yes. and uh, all the children locally when I was growing up used to call her Aunt Iris because you know she was like everybody's auntie oh lovely lovely so I'm for my, my children's foundation the Aunt Iris Children's Foundation beautiful in memory of her because she was oh. uh, I, I had the privilege of spending my last day uh, my mother's last day with her and um, we got we got to say all the things that we need. It was a very, very, very emotional day. But I'm glad I got to tell her that if I could have chosen anybody to be my mother, it would have been her. What a blessing, Mike. Yep. Seriously. I mean, that, yep. but the thing is, you did choose her as a parent. You know, we yep. all choose. I remember when my boys were about... Um, Oh, I don't know, probably about 14 and 16. And I remember exactly, we were driving through Ashurst on the way to Lindhurst. And I was say, and I said to them something about, well, you chose me as a mother anyway, or you chose us as parents. And Joey, my eldest, he turned around and said, well, I must have made a mistake then. <laughs> <laughs> it was so funny. I oh, know. <laughs> <laughs> Luckily, because I knew he didn't mean it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it was funny. It was a conversation we were having, and he said that. Yeah, is that the story that you said earlier before we came on that you wanted to share? Oh no, 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 no. Sorry. Yeah, you've reminded me. Oh, good. Um, talking about creativity. Yeah. Yes. And there was a guy, and th 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 there was. There's a guy who, who um, I can't remember his name. Um, he, uh, he designed a test for divergent thinking, yeah? Yeah. And divergent thinking, I'll give it, say if I give you a, a paper clip, yeah? Right. And you have to think as many different uses, crazy, wacky, you know, you be as crazy as you want. Yeah. For paper, yeah? And there's, there's a genius level. And um, so he decided to, to test his, his model his, uh, on this group. I think there were 1,600 in the group. And, he and he te the first time he tested them, 98% of them came out as genius level on, on divergent thinking, yeah? 
Right. He followed them up five years later. And I know these percentages are right, because this, this is a story I used to tell at my spiritual workshops years ago. Yeah. But I came across it again yesterday, which is a coincidence, and there's no such thing as coincidence. No. So he tested them again, same group, five years later, their, their genius level had dropped to 30%, or 30% of the group were operating at genius level on divergent thinking. Five years on from that, it had dropped to 12%. The original group were four and five year olds. That had the creativity educated out of them. Absolutely. And that's what that bloke said from the people's lawyer. He said, you go into school with 100% self-esteem at five years old, which is actually criminal, he says, to go in at five years old, to be separated from the mother at five years old. Yeah. is criminal um and then to come out at 15 with a very low percent i won't say how low percent he said it was but you know the majority would come out at 15 with a very low percent of self-worth because yeah. by then you've had all that oh can't even you know so there's you know a lot of work to be done there mike isn't there well yeah and you know we can't outperform our self-image if we want to increase our happiness, our success, well, you know, whatever that means to anybody in life, we have to first improve our self-image. Yeah. And, and that, that is surely by understanding to love yourself. You know, you know you're doing the best you can with what you know. Yeah. The great philosophy, that is great philosophy. And, and like I, when you're ill as well, sorry, I'll just say quickly, when you're ill, if you've got anything, a pain in your arm or, you know, any knee, feet whatever pain you've got send love to it don't don't criticize yourself for it yeah 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 whatever whatever the, the question love is the answer yes love is our whatever superpower. the question love is the answer yeah yeah love is our superpower without a doubt on all levels it is yeah and and as much as we hear that, you you've got to keep having hearing it for to remind yourself. Have you heard of Ho Oponopono? Of who, sorry? Ho Oponopono. Ho Oponopono. Yes, I have. I, I I I've heard, but go on, remind me. Yeah, no, it's just Ho Oponopono. This is my um, this is my card, and on okay. the back I've got Ho Oponopono. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. I love you and thank you. That covers everything. It's taking 100% responsibility for yourself. That's amazing because I did another podcast before this one, yeah? About, yeah. About, about an hour before. And I was flicking through Telegram and I saw that exact post. Did you really? Yeah. I'm, I think it, I'm sure it was Mark Atwood's page. I've had an email from Mark today. He's going to do a talk with me. How, how funny is that guy? <laughs> oh, he's so... Those poems that he put in between each section was yeah. genius. Absolute genius. I love Mark. I've never met him before. You know, we absolutely love him to bits. Honestly. He said, we're, we're going to have a... Yeah. We're going to have a night together next time he's in Birmingham. Oh, amazing. Yeah. What a lovely guy. What a sense of humour. Yeah. He's one of the funniest guys I've ever met. And the thing I love about him most is always himself. Yes. He doesn't give a damn what people think about him. He's just, you know, you take him or leave him. And obviously, most, the vast majority of people take him. Well, the thing is, those poems that he kept putting in, they were really meaningful, and he put the video with it and all that, and it all sounded brilliant. And then that last one, which was after lunch as well, well I'm not sure it was the last one, but it was after lunch, and it, it was pictures of, like, Boris coming up. I think I know the one you mean. <laughs> <laughs> and it had the C word across it. And then another picture of whoever it was, I don't know, say Theresa May, but it wasn't Theresa May, you know, and it had another C across. I mean, like, you're so unexpected, but it woke everyone up, didn't it? It was so funny. He was, he was telling me that he had um, an American lady go up to him after that had played, and she said to him, I hate the C word. 
but that was really funny. <laughs> Well, exactly, because you never say it. but And so that's why it was so unexpected. <laughs> <laughs> but I just thought it was amazing from start to finish. The day would not have been the same without Mark Atwood. Without a doubt, yeah, would not. Yeah, I wonder what his mum thought, because his mum was there, wasn't she? <laughs> did, did you not see his, um, his road trip diary with her the day after? Oh, no, no. Oh, you must watch that. It, on his uh, it's on his youtube channel oh, so it, it was he published it on the it is the, the interaction between the two of them it's you, you've got to watch it. i've watched it about five times oh it, brilliant it's really really good. oh that is good, really That's good I'll, to know. I'll, send, I'll send you the link if i remember after oh yeah yeah if you but want. if not it's on it's on his youtube channel yeah brilliant i'm so grateful that you took the time to do this chat with me mike Jackie, I'm, I've loved every minute so far. I've loved every minute. You know, I think we could go on for hours probably, couldn't we? Well, we could, because I know there's loads more we could talk about, absolutely. Because <laughs> you said that you post about... Oh, you if you want to tell people, you've got a Telegram channel, haven't you? I've got a Telegram channel. I'm, I'm not very creative when it comes to naming my, um, my, my, my channels and stuff. So it's just called my, Mike Shinton Channel. <laughs> That's quite a good way to find you, though, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, I guess so. I guess so. <laughs> the other thing is, um, you know, I've got this team of 15 people at the moment, um, and I'm going to need more. And like I said uh, on the 8th of May, if I I'm not particularly bothered about what qualifications people have got on paper. I'm more concerned about what what's in their hearts. Absolutely. So, you know, if any, if any of your followers, you know, well, actually, you've got the same project, so they can get in touch with you. But, you know, if anybody's inclined, um, send me an email. It's um, Mike Shinton 50, so M I K E S H I N T O N 50 at outlook.com. And that was a true email, 50, 15 years ago. <laughs> And that was at outlook.com. Outlook. Mike Shinton Outlook. 5 at outlook.com, yeah. Brilliant. Yeah. Oh, well, let's hope people get in touch with you, Mike, because it will be a fun project if you're there. Well, you know, one thing I learned many years ago, um, the happier I get, the more my life improves in every way, not just in some ways. You know, we, we attract what we give out, yeah? Without a doubt. And the other thing is, I do everything better with a smile on my face. Without a doubt, yeah. And yeah. One more thing, one more thing. Everything, looking back on my life, which actually makes complete sense now from where I'm sitting now, never did, you know, probably didn't two and a half years ago. Yeah. Everything I've done that I'm proud of, proud of doing, I did very quickly and very easily, effortlessly, which tells me that it came through me not from me. Perfect. Totally get that. So it's keeping a high vibe. It's, it's you know, and getting rid of those limiting beliefs that we picked up as, you know, seven-year-olds or, or, or before and freeing ourselves from the bondage of um, conformity. And, and I would just say that I can visualise that you're going to have way, way more than two, two acres way way more i mean I, that farm that i went to at the weekend never been there before but i'd heard about the people beautiful lovely farm they're going to do wonderful work there um but somebody there has just gifted ten thousand acres to a project wow just while you were saying that a thought popped into my head we'll need horses we what? The, I'll need horses, you know, for the, the children to interact, and, and animals for the, the children to interact Oh, absolutely. With. Yeah, llamas, donkeys, anything that the a child... Oh, yeah. Alpacas, alpacas. Don't you love alpacas? Absolutely. Yeah, rabbits. I mean, just anything. But dogs, I mean, we've got a whole dog section in ours as well, because I absolutely adore dogs, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, I'm sorry. But, but you know, since since I talked about it two weeks ago and this team has come together, it's very real now. It was it was like a concept, a vision before, but it's very real now. So yes. I know the RV is on its way and I know the funding's coming. Well, to get that group of people got... suddenly join you, you know, that you've got the right uh, vibration, that the right people are going to come together for that, aren't they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and they have, and they have. It's, a, it's an amazing bunch of people. Actually, everybody who was there was, was amazing. Well, yeah, it the was woman such a privilege that I was sat, in the evening, the woman I was sat next to, and I didn't know her at all before that, literally, she, and this is no word of a lie, she had 94,000 pictures in her phone. You wouldn't even think a phone could hold that, but she said it's held in the cloud. I don't okay. even know. I got a cloud thing, I think, because I pay 79p a month for it. So I guess that's how she does it. But like she was talking about Megan. You know who I mean by Megan? No. Harry and Megan. Say again. Harry and Megan. Sorry. Harry. Oh, um, yeah. yeah. Sorry. Yeah. yeah. Harry Megan, and yeah. Megan. Yeah. So she was talking about her and she showed me all these pictures. I mean, you know, that she didn't have the babies. No, I'm sure she didn't. <laughs> yeah. A, a bump dropped to her knees at one stage, didn't That's it? That's exactly what she showed me. <laughs> it was, she was holding it one minute and it was down on her knees the next. And, and apparently I've heard, well, unless you believe the transgender agenda, it could be quite difficult for her in inverted commas to have a baby anyway exactly <laughs> this, this is just going to blow people's minds isn't it jackie oh no i know and and then you have to discern for yourself but it's a very possible isn't it that you know you just well you rule out nothing now from what we heard and like nothing would surprise us at the moment would it no. like no <laughs> no and that well, I could say so much more about what she said to me, but it was things I'd heard before, you know. I mean, I, I expect you've heard... The trouble is you don't know what words to say and what words not to, but you know who was president um, pres president of the United States before the one that now? Yeah, you, you mean his, his wife, yeah? His wife? Yeah. Is Diana. Oh, sorry, I've got cross wires then, but yes, I just, Have you heard I that? I would not be. I'm, I'm sure. She, I'm sure she's. I've, I've heard rumours of it. Yeah. I mean. Yeah. I mean, it's. <laughs> <laughs> it just makes you think. That's all, Mike, isn't it? I'm not saying because I don't know. No, but you know, the people are still asleep. How yeah. are they going to cope all this? Yeah. And once they start to find out a bit, a lot more comes. I mean, there was pictures of um, Elvis Presley. Reverend. Yeah, I heard those rumours as well, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Michael Jackson. I I'm pretty sure he's still around. David Bowie. Mm, yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, really, yeah. It's it's just it's just mind blowing, but I, it, I really don't know how the norm is. Uh, you know, as they're, they're known as, are going to cope. No, but that's where our job starts, isn't it? Absolutely, you know, absolutely, yeah. yeah. We've got to be the in the storm. We're the, we're going to be the calm in the storm. Yes. Yeah, because that's, you just, and, and that's where how I feel a big Yes. 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 That's where Hoa yes. Pono helps. I've felt such a responsibility lately to learn as much as I can yeah. to teach them. Yeah. Because, you know, we, they're going to need to make sense of uh, in how they're going to do it. I don't know, but, you know, don't but know about we've you. Managed, we've managed and they will, yeah. Well, they will. But I, I don't know about you, but the biggest buzz I get in life is to positively help somebody you know to make without a shift. Doubt. oh without a doubt yeah definitely it's the biggest buzz yeah, yeah. 
And that and that's why we've all been chosen or chose to come here because we're the ones with love in our hearts. Without a doubt. Yeah. And it's yeah. just like you say, so important. You know, if you can send love to everyone and not judge, non-judgmental. Takes a bit of but, it takes a bit of doing at times, doesn't it? Oh, without yeah, without a doubt, because that's how we've been brought up, isn't it? Yeah. You just yeah. automatically judge. Yeah. Yeah. But the more we rise above it, the better life gets. Absolutely. Been lovely talking to you, Mike, and I no doubt we'll talk again, eh? I can't wait. I think we could go on for days, Jackie. <laughs> <laughs> well, honestly, I'll get in touch with that lady because I've got her phone number and she's got the 94,000 pictures. I'm sure she can download a load more to me. <laughs> <laughs> And then we'll have another conversation because I might have caught up with you a bit. <laughs> okay, I can't wait. This has been such a pleasure and a privilege. Thank you so much for inviting me. Oh, no, thank you, Mike. And I look forward to our next one. Take care, Jackie. All right, thank you. Thanks for anyone that's watching. <laughs>